Hey everybody and welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. This is Katie Weaver. I am here with my partner in crime and sister Christy Brower. Hello. Hey Hello. How's it going? It's good. I feel like we're getting so used to doing a show every night that maybe we just should keep doing one. <laughs> I don't know. I know. My family was like, you have a live or you're doing uh <laughs> video again? And I'm like, well, it's been an exciting week. Dude, of course I am. It's been a big week. We can't yeah. help it. And wait till next week because our hair is going to be on fire. I oh, promise. my gosh. Even bigger, I think, even bigger. Yeah, because, of course, Lori goes to court on Monday and Tuesday next yeah. week. Yeah. So we are mostly here today to share with you the recorded call that Melanie Gibb made between herself and Lori and Chad in early December. Yes. Uh, we're going to share that and then we're going to break it down for you because there was quite the uh, scripture dance off, you know, <laughs> scripture dance off. I like that. That's a good one. <laughs> that uh, I know a lot of people that listen to that had no idea what all of that meant. And yeah. a lot of just the uh, the kind of the Mormon speak, you know, that went on in there that a lot of it. Yeah, we can break down for you. And so we're going to do that. Before that, though, we had a couple of other things we wanted to share uh, briefly. The potential witness list for Lori's prelim. Yeah. Uh, we think you guys will find this as interesting as we did. Now, I'm going to share all of the names. These might not all, not all of these people will be called to the stand, know that. But some of them will. And it is going to be interesting. Wow. Oh maybe, maybe I am. Hmm. Mm. I have I, it if you'd like me to. Well, let me give it one more try and you might have to. <laughs> I thought I had it all pulled up and ready. So oh. uh, organized and, you know, no. Okay, I've got it. All right. Okay. There we go. Let's now you're going to recognize some of these names. We saw some of these people this week at Chad's prelims. Some of them we did not. And yeah. again, just because they're on this list doesn't mean they're going to be called, but these are the this is the potential witness list. Yeah. So here we go. Detective Ron Ball from the Rexburg PD saw him. Yep. Detective Ray Hermosillo, we saw. Detective Dave Stubbs, we saw. Mm -hmm. Detective Chuck... Uh, Concitus. Concitus, yeah. Did we see him? We did not. Nope. Mm -mm. Uh, Detective Dave Hope. Detective Rick Schmidt. And Detective Randy Reese. And uh, Officer Kellen Wetton. Those are all uh, people from the Rexburg Police Department. Mm-hmm. Detective Chad Catalahuna from the Kauai Police Department. Mm -hmm. Detective Ryan Piller from the Gilbert Police Department. Uh -huh. We heard about him this week. We did from mm -hmm. Melanie. Gibbs. Yeah. This is who Melanie finally uh, spilled her guts to yes. and from that call over to. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Detective Nate Moffat from the Chandler Police. Melanie Gibb. David Warwick. Dear God, poor David Warwick. I, I hope he doesn't have to again, poor guy. Me too. Um, dun, da, da, dun. Chad Daybell. Oh my God. Highly I mean, unlikely. Highly God, unlikely. I know, but I want him to, I please put him on stand. Come on. Right. They probably won't. I mean, I, I, I don't know that he could do anything but plead the fifth, really. I mean, like he might actually right. have to plead you yeah. know, self-incrimination because or yeah. he'll just get up there and lie his ass off. So mm -hmm. one or the other, but I bet they don't put him on, but Me man, too. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be great if they did? But yeah, I still love seeing him on the list. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Julie Wilcox. Julie, was Julie the friend? Oh, no, that was April. I don't know who Julie Wilcox is. Uh, uh, she's one of the prepper people, I think. Okay. Uh, Larry Woodcock. Kay Woodcock. Adam oh, Cox. Put Kay Woodcock on the stand. Please give her a chance. Mm -hmm. Adam Cox, that's uh, Lori's brother, the one who she was claiming was trying to kill her. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if he's going to refute that. With complete poppycock. Let's be very clear. I'm, I'm not here to smear please poor do. Adam. He has not done anything. No. Uh, Zachary Cox, that's Adam's son. He was living with Charles and Lori at the time that Lori... Uh, threw all of Chad's stuff away and stole his truck and pulled all of yeah. those shenanigans back in January of 2019. And has publicly been not a supporter. So yeah. interesting, interesting yeah. if they put him on the stand. Brandon Boudreaux. And mm -hmm. Brandon Boudreaux is the ex-husband of Lori's niece, Melanie Boudreaux-Pulowski, 
This is the person who was shot at last year who, uh, you know, most people have really figured that Alex did that, you know, that made an attempt on his life. After he was dead. Yeah. Yeah. And that, uh, and of course, then Brandon went into hiding with the kids. There's been some pretty ugly custody stuff between them in Arizona. And the judge has sided fully with Brandon over and over again uh, that the kids definitely should continue to be with their dad and are not safe in the care of their mother. Uh, Melanie Pulowski, the mother, Lori's niece, Mm -hmm. who also lived in Rexford for a time during all of this. We have not really heard anything from her. You know she knew, you guys, that those kids were missing. How the hell couldn't she? She Uh, lived, she was Lori's niece and neighbor. And we we did hear from her on East Idaho News and all she did was just talk in circles and lie her ass off. Mm -hmm. She couldn't even keep her own lies straight, so. It's going to be interesting if they try to get anything out of her. Ian Pulowski, who is Melanie's uh, new husband, they Mm -hmm. got married at the same time that Zulima and Alex got married in In late uh, in November. Yeah, in Las Vegas. And, you know, actually, whether he meant to or he didn't, Ian has been kind of one of the unsung heroes of this case because he he kind of seems like a canary. So I hope they get him on the stand. He, yeah. He's he brought a lot of info. Stuff. Mm-hmm. He informed for the FBI. He also turned a laptop over to his ex-wife that had a written statement on it that uh, she wasn't quite sure where it came from, but she turned it over to police and released it. So pretty interesting stuff. I would love to hear from Ian Pulowski. I, I would too. I think he mm-hmm. knows a lot and he was not involved. He didn't even know these people at the time all this stuff went down. Mm-hmm. He's a pretty good source, I think. Mm-hmm. Leah Bernard and Seth Bernard, those were Lori's neighbors here in Rexburg. Oh, right. Uh huh. Let's they see. SAC. Yeah. Chris Smith from the National Park Service. Yeah, probably something to do with that visit to Yellowstone, I'll bet. Mm-hmm. Deputy Chief Ranger Chris, Chris Flesh from the National Park Service. Same, yeah. Sydney Woodbury. Travis Homer, yeah. FBI. Ricky Wright, FBI. Michael Douglas, FBI, totally different Michael Douglas than yeah, you're thinking. Totally different. Interesting <laughs> that it's three different FBI agents than they had testify at Chad's, on Chad's case. Yeah, but I actually read today people. that three of the ones that uh, were at Chad's have been subpoenaed to Lori's. So, have they? Uh, interesting. So maybe they'll be coming back. But yeah, those are three different names. Yeah, they are. Mark Sari from the Social Security Investigations Office. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. Uh-huh. Social Security. One thing so. that Social Security doesn't like. Yeah. And, and they frown on this. And I, you know, maybe it's a gray area. Maybe it's not. They don't like it when people continue to collect Social Security benefits for kids that they murdered. Yeah. It turns out that's frowned upon. Yeah. yeah. So he's going to have something to say. I suspect there will at some point be federal charges against her for social security fraud. I mean, they don't mess around with that. So yeah, I would assume so. Jason Gwilliam. I don't know. Colby Ryan. That of course is Lori's oldest son, Mm -hmm. Jack Daybell and Sheila Daybell. Those are Chad's parents. Uh, Lori and Chad had sat in these nice people's living room and told them that Lori was an empty nester and didn't have any minor children. I'm assuming Mm -hmm. that's why they have been, but you know, you know what assuming does? Mm-hmm. It makes an ass out of you and me. So that's, it's, that's the word on the street. <laughs> Teresa Christensen, second grade teacher. She was uh, was JJ. JJ's teacher at uh, Kennedy Elementary for the short time that he was there. Joshua Wilson, Kennedy, Kennedy Elementary School principal. Yeah. I know Josh Wilson. He is a wonderful, wonderful man. And sad that his school got wrapped up in this in any way at all. But... That's an interesting one. Randy Lords, he's a representative from Madison School District. Mm-hmm. Julie Black, Dale Guthrie, MD, and Gary, Gary, good Lord, Gary Oxier, MD, and Tim Jacks, DO. We don't recognize those names. We're thinking that these are doctors from Arizona because they don't seem to be ones from our area. But they were the children's doctors. Mm hmm. Robert Minicola from Kauai Beach Resorts, from their fun times in Kauai. Mm-hmm. 
Sean Derrick, Blue Sky Property. Greg Kraus, Tracy Singleton from the Idaho Health and Welfare. Christy, you know Tracy, I believe. I do. Yeah. 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 Uh, which will represent, uh, you know, relating to the uh, the abandonment charges and what, yeah. what the state did there. Audrey, hmm, I don't know. It starts with Baratiero. a B. Baratiero. Yeah, Baratiero. That's good. Mm -hmm. Good job. And Reverend Colin Moore, a.k.a. Kahu Coco. We believe that is the person who married these fools in uh, November of last year. Yeah. So that's the possible witness list. They can add to it. They can take away from it. That Those are just some thoughts. Yeah. Very interesting. Quite a list and interestingly, significantly different than Chad's list. Um, yes. Big, bigger, I think, and mm -hmm. way more, you know, you didn't see any family members um, being called to testify in Chad's hearing. Yeah. Lots of Lori's family being called to testify. Mm -hmm be yep. interesting to see who they actually put on the stand. Yes, uh, absolutely. So, you know, hold on to your hats. And of course, we will cover that case just the way, or, you know, that prelim, just the way we've covered this one. So we'll be yep. here and, and cover it with you guys. Uh, something else kind of interesting that came out of Salt Lake City today from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, yeah. from the Office of the First Presidency, this uh, was two general authorities, general officers, and the following leaders in the United States and Canada, Area 70s, state commission and district and temple presidents, bishops and branch presidents, members of ward and stake councils. Dear brothers. So basically all leadership was, is what that means. All, 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 all leadership. Male leadership. Yeah. Dear brothers and sisters, involvement in legal proceedings. We remind leaders and members of a long-standing policy that church leaders should not involve themselves in civil or criminal cases regarding members in their units, quorums, or organizations without first consulting the church legal counsel. This same policy applies to leaders corresponding with court personnel on behalf of criminal defendants or others, including through email. However well-intentioned, church leaders sharing information in legal proceedings can sometimes be misinterpreted, even damaging. Such sharing can be especially harmful to victims and their families. Following the church's policy also keeps the church from being inappropriately implicated in legal matters. If a leader believes he or she should testify or communicate in a legal manner, or if a leader is being required to do so by legal process, that leader must contact the Office of General Counsel at church headquarters at blah, 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 blah. Interesting timing. Uh, very. And, and you know, I mean, you know, we're ex-Mormons. We, we don't have any, there's no love lost there. Um, but I do find it troubling, the yeah. indication that, you um, People shouldn't be um, involved in legal proceedings if they're subpoenaed, if they know information that should be told without their own legal counsel. Why? We're not talking about people who are um, suspected of a crime. We're talking about people who might have information about right. a crime. This seems, this, I, you know, you, Katie, you and I know, we have seen letters like this throughout our lives. Oh, yeah. That, that really give a very clear indication of who is really in charge of mm -hmm. people's lives. And this, it just, just, it really rubs me wrong. It, it that, well, it does me too, and the timing of it just can't be ignored. Right. I mean, it's, it's 100% about this case. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the thing is, I have not seen any. a Mormon church board or stake or whatever. No, me neither. But shouldn't all citizens of the United States be encouraged to participate with the legal system, be, be encouraged to share what they know, be encouraged to be honest and pass that information on? I mean, what is legal counsel going to tell them to do? Uh, yeah. And why do you need legal counsel to just tell the truth? I would really love more clarification on that from somebody who who knows because that is troubling. It is. And it's troubling that it came out right now. And knowing I really that, hope that, that means that there's there isn't 
some religious leader in our area that is withholding information on this case because of, they've been asked to. Mm -hmm. Because frankly, that'll piss me off in a big way. Yeah. The yeah. the damage done to these to these children, to this family, and to our community. People have the right to the truth. Yeah. And this just, ew, it makes me yeah. sick to my stomach. I remember letters like this from when we were younger. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. There's a lot of unspoken. There's a lot unspoken there. Yes, there is. Yeah, there is. Um, also in the state of Idaho, the state of Idaho is, uh, uh, wow. Can you help me out? <laughs> uh, that all adults are mandatory yeah. reporters? Yes. A mandatory reporter state. Thank you. All mm -hmm. adults are mandatory reporters. If you see or suspect child abuse uh, or neglect in any form, it is your legal obligation in the state of Idaho to make a report. Not to seek legal counsel first before you do, but to report it. Yeah. So this does, this this concerns me. I really yeah. question why. And is there someone out there in our community with information that is withholding in this situation? And what could possibly be the benefit of that? Yeah. That just, ooh, yeah. Didn't like it. Don't feel good about it. Yep. Very interesting. So if anyone uh, wants to offer a little more clarification that really, you know, sees deeper into that, please do. But uh, please yeah. do. And don't, don't just defend. Tell us yeah. the truth. Why would yeah. someone need that legal counsel? Yeah. prior to simply telling the truth about something that they know about the murders of children. Yeah. That's what we want to know. Absolutely. That's what we want to know. Yep. We're not here to fight. We're not here to inflame. We're, we no. want to hear all sides. We're what open, and open to hear what all is sides. the real purpose of that. Yeah. That is my yeah. concern. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. Well, with all of that being said, uh, we yes. want to share with you guys the phone call. So this, of course, this is after Chad and Lori have asked Melanie to lie to the police and tell them that she has JJ with her, which she did do initially. She never made contact with the Rexford. Kind of. She Quite. said he'd been with me, but he's not now. His mother's picked him up. Right. Because she didn't make contact. Yeah. She, she kind of put it all off as long as she could. Then she, she said, yes, he was with me, but his mother's come and gotten him. And then it didn't sit right with her that something was obviously up. Why would her friends ask her mm -hmm. to put herself in danger and lie to the police. Mm -hmm. Why are they not being honest? And what the hell mm -hmm. is really going Where on is here? JJ? Where is this Where kid? Is yep. And I think, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, selfish note, how much trouble am I going to be in? Yes. Because I lied to the police about this. Mm -hmm. Now, I really do think that David, her boyfriend, really empowered her, you know, to make this stand phone. up for herself. Mm -hmm. and stand up for herself. So they, she made a call. She called Chad's phone and put it on speakerphone and they recorded the call on David's phone because she didn't know how to record on her phone. Anyway, that, that's how they set up the call so that they could record it because essentially what she was trying to do was get them to tell her whatever. No police officer, no one asked her to do this. This was totally on her own accord. Mm -hmm. She did it to try to establish her own innocence because she, she did. She made that really very clear in court that this was to protect herself. Yeah. Which frankly so, was smart, I think. Yeah. It is a 20 minute call. We're going to break right here and let you guys listen to the call. And then we'll come back and break it down a little bit to help you maybe understand some of the phrasing and things that you hear that maybe you didn't quite get. So, with that, let's go ahead and uh, turn the time over to Melanie. Lori and Chad. What do we call him now? Uh, resting toad face. Here, I'll do yeah. it. Resting toad face. There you go. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs> so good. I tried to do it today. I practiced in front of the mirror. You're much better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll turn it over. Here we go. This is a recording on December 8th at 3.43 p.m. And I am calling Chad Daybell's phone number, and hopefully I will be talking to both of them, Chad and Lori. So here goes the phone call. Hello, sweet Melanie. Hi, Chad. Hey, Lori. How are hey, you? let me put on speaker. Oh, okay. 
Alright. <laughs> How are you guys? We're okay. How are you doing, babe? I'm doing pretty good, thanks. I was wondering where where are you guys? We're just hanging out. Hanging out? <laughs> are you are you in Idaho? We're no. in Idaho. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to ask you a question, if you don't mind, Lori. Yeah, of course. Um, I want to know, um, you remember we talked about JJ going to Kay's house, and you told me they went there, and now he's not there? I was wondering what happened. Well, I had to move him somewhere else because of her actions, so... Was she, was she doing something? Like, was she trying to come get him or something? Or, like, trying to kidnap him? Well, she's, yeah, she said that lots of times before, but, um. Okay, I, well, when, you know, when I asked Chad the other day, I was like, hey, um, you know, where, where is JJ? And he said, for my security, he didn't want me to know, so is there a reason I should be in danger to know where he is? <laughs> No, it's nobody. It's his danger. It's the danger that there's people after me. Okay. We so just felt it, that if you knew, that puts you in a danger. Well, just in a bad position. Yeah, bad position. Everybody, right. if they don't know anything, then they don't have to say they know. Right, so you're just worried. Okay. Um, I'm just to keep him protected and... And keep you protected. And keep everybody else protected. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, well, I was wondering why you told the police why he was with me. I just needed to use, have somebody that I, so I wouldn't have to tell them where he really was because they were going to tell Kay where he is. Oh, yeah. So is it, do you think it's like your family or, you know, like your family, your dad or, you know, those well, my people? my family. Well, not my whole family, but as you know, most of my family is working against me and yeah. with her, basically. Yeah. Is JJ safe? He is safe and happy. Okay, well, that's good to hear. Um, are you afraid of anything? Like, are you afraid to tell me that you're just afraid that he... Um, that I could be in danger, like you're, you know, like I don't, like if I knew, like how could that hurt me? I don't understand how that could hurt me if I knew where he was. Well, I'm just not telling anybody so that nobody has to say where he is or get questioned to where he is so I can keep him as safe as possible. Yeah. Um, Okay, I hope, well, I hope that he's okay. I hope you guys are okay. I did have a question that I asked Al at one point, your brother, um, if, um, if I wanted to know, you know, um, like where he was, and he said I did not want to know, and that he could not be found. So what does that mean? I don't know why he would say that, but it's the same story, like I... Yeah. I, I, I don't even want Al to know. I don't want anybody to know so that nobody has to be worried about it. I mean, nobody has to be yeah. questioned about it so he can be safe. Yeah, so are you, I mean, are you, how, how long are you going to be away for? Like, how, I mean, are you ever going to be able to come out and come back to society again? Or are you going to keep, you know, like... Come back? I mean, like, what does that look like? I will do whatever the Lord needs me to do every day, so. Okay. Well, I just wondered if I was ever going to see you again. Absolutely, you will. Okay, so, yep. so maybe when they're done chasing you, you'll be able to come out of, will they able to come out again, or? Yeah, I mean, it's a ridiculous thing for them to be working with Kay to find me. There's nothing that's gone on that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're working yeah. with her in some dark capacity. The police yeah. are working with her in some mm -hmm. dark capacity. There's no reason for them to be after me mm -hmm. in the first place. Hmm. Yeah, has she, has she threatened you at all? Yes, lots of times. 
Oh boy. Like, what did she say? Well, it's in emails and everything. So, so like, she said she was going to come take them, or she was. There's a lot of things. Yeah. Nellie. I know it sounds like it. I'm just worried for you guys because, you know, he's missing and, you know. <laughs> I know exactly right. where he is. He's perfectly okay. fine. Okay, well, I hope so. Okay. I, have, I have a scripture I wanted to share with you, if you don't mind. I love it. I was thinking about some of the things you guys have gone through, and I saw the scripture today. And I wanted to, I want you to come Let me ask you a question. Let okay. me ask you a question yeah. about scripture. Okay. okay, so did Alma turn himself into King Noah, or what did, was he required to do? Well, King Noah was incredibly wicked. Yes. And so he, he fled his, his evil ways, which is which was adultery and, and right, living riotously and breaking all the commandments. Right, so what, did he, what was he required to do, Alma? He had to go and flee so that he would um, be safe and then help other people realize how, you know, jacked up the system was and the government was. What about Moroni? What was he required to do at the end? To to carry on those plates and bury them. That was what his did responsibility. He do to do that? What did he have to do to do that? Did well, he, he hide? He had to hide. He, he had to hide because they were so... Um, Oh, they were so. Um, everybody was killing everybody in the society. Everybody was dying. They were well, killing all the natives. Well, in the scriptures, had to hide in the cavity of a rock by day and go out by night. The, pro the, the prophets. Death. The prophets did. They did. Yeah. Okay. So well, thank you for sharing I that with me. Okay. I just that this scripture is just something that may be thoughtful for you. For behold, this is Doctrine and Covenants section three, verse seven and eight. It says, "For behold, you should not have feared man more than God." Although men set not the counsels of God and despise his words, yet you should have been faithful, and he would have extended his arm and supported you against all the fiery darts of the adversary. He would have been with you in every trouble. So when we work with the Lord and are obedient, he has, he's going to protect us from adversarial darts and all kinds of negativity. But when we open the door to Satan, he comes in, and then he attacks, and then he takes away to make it look like, Somebody else took it away, but that's not how God works. He doesn't work in darkness. I agree with you 100%, and that's what the Lord is doing for me, exactly what he's doing for me. Oh, it just, it just, it just we sounds weird. We have not weird. opened the door for darkness now. Darkness is knocking on the door all the time because that's the way dark works with the light. And I promise you... I have done nothing wrong in this case, but sometimes you have to hide in the cavity of a rock for your own life safety. And that's what the Lord requires of you sometimes. And that's how it is. And I'm sorry that's how it is because there is a lot of darkness on the earth. Yeah, I know. It's been after me for zero reason besides the darkness of Kay, which you already know she's dark. I, I I haven't met her enough to know if she's dark or not. I've just met her slightly, and she seemed like a normal kind of person, but then I haven't engaged with her that much, so I don't know that personally. So you don't know about her changing the thing to for herself to be the beneficiary of the policy and all that stuff? None of that's dark, right? Well, I haven't seen those documents, so I have no way of knowing. You've seen them on my computer. No, I have not. I haven't even looked in on your computer before. You haven't shown me anything. I don't know why you're being controversial to me or if you're recording this conversation for the police or whatever. I don't know what your intention is on this phone call. Well, but I love with all my heart, and I have forever, and well, I will always love you. I appreciate those words, but if you really loved me, you wouldn't have told the police that I had Jeju with me. That's not, that's not what a friend does. I mean, that just makes me look weird, and it, it just... It's not safe for me. That doesn't look good. I mean, you had to think of my welfare if you love me. I do, and I did exactly what I felt the Lord was instructing me to do. And I appreciate you, and I love you. Love and I will never do anything to harm you. And you can have all of this confirmed to you by the Lord. I have. And my, my conscience is clear. I feel very understanding what's really going on, Lori. And I believe that 
I believe that you have been very deceived by Satan. I believe that he has tricked you. And I just, I don't believe that what you're doing is correct. I just don't, I mean, Tammy dies and then your husband died and then these, and then he's missing. It just doesn't sound like God's plan to me. It just sounds, it gives me a gut feeling like in my gut, it feels weird. It doesn't feel right. I don't have peace about it. I never have felt hundred percent peace about it. I always felt like a little weird in my stomach about all these things. You know me, Mel. You know me. This does not sound like you. This sounds like you've been influenced by somebody dark who wants you to believe dark things and have fear and have fear of the celestial world. I don't have fear. You obviously do. No, I have a piece of conscience and I can see clearly. Well, I'm sorry that you feel that way. I love you so much. I know you do. I don't know what else to say. Stand Christ when he comes again and he's coming soon and we will all stand there and you will know at that point that he has supported me and has supported me the whole time and I have not been deceived. I just want to testify that I I know Tammy has had the conspiracy theories. My sister-in-law is right behind it all and I hope that you're not being influenced by that dark team. I don't know who she is. I'm sorry, you oh, said your sister-in-law? I don't even know her. Oh, I know, but she's coming up with the same type of theories. Mm -hmm. And it's just not true. My own children were there. They testified that Tammy had been getting weaker and sick, and I begged her to go to the doctor. There's, she just, her heart was failing her. She was physically falling apart, but she hates doctors. And mm -hmm. She just passed away. Um, that's how it happened. My son Garth was right there with me the whole time. My kids were with, at the house within the 20 minutes of her passing. Like, there were two coroners. They checked her out right there on the bed. All these conspiracy theories just make me sick to my stomach. Uh, just absolutely sick. I know it's, I've been told for years that Tammy would pass away at a young age. I had no idea that Lori would even be a part of my life. I just knew that I, my life had two segments. And that I know Tammy's on a special mission and she's with my kids. She's visited them. Just, there's so much, Melanie, that you, you just have to have faith. And this is not some sort of master plan. There's no way Lori and I can ever come up with this. It's just... You can understand my concern, correct? I can from an outside perspective, but from an... From someone who knows as much as you know? No, not really. <laughs> but we can feel Dave's influence on you. I can feel that for sure. He's a very good man, and he has a very strong foundation that I know. I know, but he seems to be the one that's putting the doubts in your mind. No, he, no. The, the, you know what? I have... I have come to understand that my gut feeling, I was not listening to it. And I always felt uncomfortable with uh, many things. Okay. Well, I'm sorry that I included you in those teachings then for your own sake, because I wish that you didn't have as much knowledge as you have, as you will be accountable for the knowledge that you do have, no? So will you. I so agree 100%. Yeah, oh, I have no fear. Yeah. I have no fear of that. Yeah. But I really, uh, you know, as I, was, I was reading the story of Korahor, and it is so very similar to this. You just can't see it. But he did it because he was trying to reclaim a people, and he thought at the very end, because of his carnal and natural desires, that's what influenced him. And he was very, that's very carnal, deceiving. natural desires. Well, honey, you got a lot of natural desires. We all know that. That's what you think is me, Cora Hart? Are you kidding me right now? I think both of you have, have similar, right now. similarities. It's in the scriptures. It's in the scriptures. And the scriptures are very powerful. 
Yes, they are. I live by the scriptures, as you know. I know, but we can rest the scriptures for our own vain glory. If I rested the scriptures? We can. We can do that. And I feel that you have to I suit not... our, our belief systems. Do I rest the scriptures? Is that what you're accusing me of at this point? I feel that you have. How? Why do you feel that way? I need an explanation on this. Because if you look, like the scripture just you shared, okay, you read scriptures. scriptures every single day, you know? I, I, oh, I know you read them. I know about that. But, but this scripture right here says that you will be supported by all against the fiery darts of the adversary. You would have been supported if you had not opened dark portals and dark junk. You would have been safe if you would have obeyed God. He would have had your back. But you have been chased and tortured. Was there to do this or not? I'm sorry? He had back. So, well, if he has your back, you would not not be able to tell me where you are. And we couldn't find JJ. Like, where is he? I've been asking, where is he? And you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's I can tell everything where JJ is right now. And that would not be good, for JJ. So I'm sorry that you don't want me to protect my children, but I would never ask you to not protect your children. Of course you wouldn't. So I can tell that you're just adversarial now. I love you. I'm sorry that you feel this way. Because I actually do care. I'm sharing what I feel for you because I know your salvation's in trouble for what you've done. If my salvation is not in trouble at all, and I think you should check that with the Lord again. Oh, I, I, I felt a lot of things from the Lord. And this doesn't feel right. Well, I'm sorry that you feel that way, sweetheart. I'm sorry that you are friends with all those who are against me. Joseph Smith's friends turned I'm not, against me. I'm not a friend. I'm not friends with people that are against you. Apparently you are. I am not. I don't know Kay. I don't know who you're talking about. Your sister, I don't even know what her name or who she is. I don't know any of those people. Why would they contact me anyway? How would I even know about that? Well, you're friends with Dave and he's well, apparently well, you now. Well, David is a very righteous man, and um, I've always known that grounding about him. And he has a lot of beautiful experiences with the Lord, and these are not the same. You know, when you get the priesthood, that's Peter, James, and John shows up, and then he confirms all of those in the circle that are to get it, and everybody's a witness of that. Everybody's a witness that the pattern is in the scriptures. There's no witness that you ever receive what you think you receive. Nobody has seen that but you. There's no witness. The witness, Joseph Smith, Oliver Calvary, Martin Harris, the eight witnesses, they all showed up. Is there a witness when Jesus, Heavenly Father, gave that to Joseph Smith by himself in the grove? Was there a witness? No, but they had no. it later with other uh, people. That was uh, one experience, but others joined in later. When he brought other people into okay. it, they had experiences. Is that in the scriptures, yes or no? I'm sorry? Is that in the scriptures, yes or no? That, that Joseph was alone when he saw God the Father and Jesus Christ? Yes. Yes, he was alone. He was alone. But he okay, had to so open it up pattern. first. That's not a pattern at all. Honey, what I'm saying is, is that after he saw that and other people joined in, they saw the things with him. He wasn't alone. There was a witness for them. There was no witness. Anybody's never seen what you've seen or experienced what you've seen. That's your own witness, but nobody said that. You no, know, God knows it, and I will never deny it. For my soul would be at stake if I did. So you can say it didn't happen to me, Mel, but if I say it, then I am accountable. You didn't witness it, okay, but, but I did. But your behaviors I, is not, so okay, Christ. I understand that's what you, you believe you saw, but this is the thing, as I see, is that your behavior is not one of somebody Never that's in Christ. Your behavior, your behavior. Your behavior. What? Never had any idea that you would be the person of all people to turn to me. I cannot believe I am that. asking questions, and I am concerned for you. That is what somebody does when they care. You don't sound like you're concerned. You sound like you're accusatory. You do not sound concerned. You sound pissed off. I'm not. I am very. I am troubled. Maybe that's the better word. Troubled. Because these things, like you being with Chad before he's even divorced, is unusual behavior for a person that sees Jesus Christ. I was never with him, and he was never divorced. 
Honey, I've seen you guys together. Oh, oh, so I haven't ever seen you with, I've never seen you with Chad kiss him and walk around the track at BYU with him. I never saw that. You say you're the one that's just feeling guilty about being with someone before they were divorced. Oh, honey. I think that's not what we're talking about here. Wait, it's not what we're talking about here. That's what I'm saying. You are going off the deep end. But well, I'm just saying, this is not a behavior of someone that sees Jesus Christ. It's not the behavior. Really? Have really? you ever seen Jesus Christ? So do you know what the future behavior would be if you had seen Jesus Christ? I know no. that when I I know that every when I pray. Lord asks me to do every day, and he does protect me, and he is protecting me, and he will protect me against this accusation as well. And we will both stand there with him. And you tell me if I was lying or not. Well, we're both standing there with Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. So there you have it. That's the phone call uh, in court. Melanie said that the uh, phone cut off. Uh, it really seemed to me that uh, Lori hung up on her, but. Oh, uh, yeah. Come on. Lori hung up on her. Mm -hmm. uh, Got one more selfish, self-righteous dig in and then hung up. Yeah. So we'll break it down the best we can, starting with the opening sentence. First mm -hmm. of all, it made me laugh a tiny bit. The, the second Chad answered, she was like, hi, Chad. Hi, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little nervous, a little nervous. little nervous. Knew what she was God, there I would have be. been too, man. That... But Chad, hello, sweet Melanie. Ugh. Oh, that's so patriarchal and typical. Uh, that phrase, that phrase is a phrase that is used to keep women small. Mm-hmm. And to remind them of their place mm -hmm. and how they are to behave. You are sweet, mm -hmm. Melanie. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Maybe mm -hmm. it was gross. It was yeah, gross. That, that nailed me right to the wall in the beginning. Um, it's an insult in Mormonism, mm -hmm. uh, a, a veiled insult to say, she has such a sweet spirit. Yes. That means she's a cranky bitch and I hate her, but mm -hmm. that's not okay to say. So we'll say she has such a sweet spirit. Yeah. Uh, Yes, that term "sweet" is it's mm -hmm. it, that's a Mormonism. It is definitely, definitely. Ooh, and I just felt that the energy around it was ugh, yucky. Because yeah. you know, they were in, currently on the run in hiding when she made this phone call, mm -hmm. and he knew damn well what she was calling about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So right off the bat, of course, you know we have Lori. Well, of course, lying about mm -hmm. the whole thing because you guys you got to remember melanie had been told by lori yeah. that she, lori had told Kay that she had breast cancer and that she needed help with jj and that they had met up in an airport and she handed jj off to her yeah. that's what melanie believed happened yes so when all of this went down she was really surprised because she knew lori didn't have jj but she thought Kay did yeah yeah. So all of that trying to press her, like, well, what happened? How did that go down? Did you go get him or did you go meet her? Right. Or how did you get him from her? You know, well, and Lori wouldn't answer any of that, of course. Right. No. Well, but even before that, the being so evasive about their location, we're we're near Idaho. What the hell does yeah. that mean? That means yes. you're lying. That's what that means. Yeah, they wouldn't disclose even that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a miracle they even answered the phone because at that point she refused to answer the phone for Colby. He couldn't get a hold of her at all. I know. I'm really surprised about this other than I suspect they expected a phone call from her about the, you know, implicating her. And maybe they yeah. were had a plan about how they were going to placate her. Yeah. Because my sense is that they've been able to manipulate the hell out of her up until mm -hmm. this point. They were not expecting this. They no. were not expecting her to come at them with what the hell, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and she yeah. did it in a very nice way, a lot nicer way than I would have done it. Mm -hmm. um, but she really stood up to them, I think, probably for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. A few scriptural references um, that are probably worth mentioning in towards the beginning when she's talking about, uh, she, Lori mentions a Book of Mormon prophet named Alma who went into yeah. hiding. He went into hiding uh, to escape the servants of wicked King, King Alma because wicked King, King Alma, Noah. sorry. Or King Noah, sorry, this was Alma. Uh, this is how, you know, I, I did go to seminary. But, <laughs> okay, so Alma was in hiding to escape the wicked King Noah. And, you know, 
everyone was trying to kill him and he was the big martyr that had to go into hiding and do the Lord's work. Who does mm -hmm. that sound like? Yeah, and a hero. He he's a hero he's of a hero, the Book of Mormon. Yes. And so she was very much, you know, saying yes. that's who I am. I'm a hero for what yeah. I'm doing. Keep yeah. in mind, this is in December. Her kids have been dead since September and yeah. buried in her husband's backyard. Yeah. So yeah. she knows damn well where those kids are when oh. she's saying this crap. Yeah. She also compares herself to uh, another prophet from the Book of Mormon called Moroni, or of mm -hmm. course, if you are John Pryor, Moroni. <laughs> but, uh, that was the uh, best. Still the best, yeah. Still the best, yep. Uh, he also was being pursued by enemies and had to hide in the name of righteousness. He hid in a cave and hid the golden plates that were later found by Joseph Smith. So, you that know, was she's supposedly used to translate into the Book of Mormon. Yes. So she, if you don't know Mormon lore here. Yeah. So she, again, is comparing herself to, you know, heroes from the Book of Mormon that were basically trying to do the right thing with all of this evil around them. Yeah. Yeah. And very much, um, you know, at risk and everyone's after them, you know, that paranoia and that creating this situation where everyone's after me, you know. Yes. Ugh, yuck. Okay. All that is, is just an excuse for bad behavior. Whenever I've heard anyone tell me something like that, I know that they're full of shit yeah. and that they are the ones doing some things they shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. And it's just an easy way out to say, well, everyone's after me, so I have to protect myself. It's okay. just, ugh. Yeah. yeah. Well, and doesn't, isn't, aren't there, aren't there some documentation somewhere that um, Lori believes that she was the wife of Moroni in mm -hmm. a previous life. Yeah. That was, I believe that was in an email from Chad. Wow. From, oh, that's right. From Chad. Where he, oh, from Charles. I'm sorry. Well, no, no it was from Chad. It was I think actually Chad. there was documentation that Charles told someone this. Oh, it was a body cam. So yes, it was an email from Chad. It was okay. also a body cam that uh, Charles was telling this stuff to a police officer who was like, oh, is this... Mormonism? I don't I don't know this religion. Remember, he was confused about it. Yes, he was saying, that's right. you know, she thinks that she was the wife of, yes, she yeah. was the wife of Moroni. And because of, somewhere um, in all this weirdness, of, they yeah, yeah. They added past belief in past lives to Mormonism, which if you know mainstream Mormonism, that is definitely not a Mormon belief. No, I've still no. been like, where, where are these guys mm -hmm. coming from? Like, anyway. And you see how not that I think there's any problem believing in past lives, but that does not gel with their religion at all. Yeah. But you can see how they flipped the switch on sweet Melanie to deciding oh. that Melanie was being influenced by dark. Yes. I'm sure the minute they got off the phone, phone, they conferred that Melanie and David both are now dark. They I now do become... believe that Melanie and David's lives were in grave danger last mm -hmm. year. I do believe I, that. I, I think so too. Well, it, it's so convenient how everyone who is against them in any way or trying to hold them accountable is dark. Mm -hmm. It's dark. So that, that's gaslighting, number oh, one. Totally, but it's, yeah. it's such an indication of delusion. Yeah, They're delusional. Mm -hmm. They're delusional. They are believing their own hype. They've told mm -hmm. this story to themselves and they are believing it because now they, the mm -hmm. Rexburg police, who don't even know these dummies, right. are working with Kay against them. I, mm -hmm. Kay, who lives in Texas, like, mm -hmm. you know, think about it rationally. Why would that oh, be? Kay lives in like Louisiana. Oh, yeah. Louisiana. There you yeah. go. Yeah. She lives far away, doesn't have mm -hmm. anything to do with Rexburg PD. All mm -hmm. of this, you know, it's it's this convenient story that they just create and craft mm -hmm. and change yeah. any time they want. Yeah. And to anyone who their own delusions. Yeah. And anyone who isn't falling for their hype is dark. They're all dark. They're all They're bad. All dark. Everyone's against it's it's mm -hmm. this self-affirming delusion where mm -hmm. oh there's another one that's gonna turn against us. Yeah, we are the heroes yeah. of this story and everyone's out to get us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you think of the Doctrine and Covenants scripture? That's another Mormon uh scriptural book, by the way, uh, that Melanie shared. Share with, it with, with me. Oh, well, yeah. I don't have the exact words. It was it was basically that rather than living in fear, mm -hmm. if you are living a righteous life, you're going to be protected by God. Right. Yes. And and, and that you are constantly being attacked, mm -hmm. and and you know this might indicate you're working in darkness if everyone's out to get you. Basically, yep. was the gist of it. Yep. Very. Uh, a, a lot of the things that Lori said, I felt like were very martyry. You know. Oh, right. I'm. We're the martyrs here. We're the ones standing up for good, doing righteous while everyone else is bad and dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and I have done nothing wrong in this case. Yeah. What case, Lori? I mean, yeah. that's interesting language. To it you. is interesting language. Yeah. It, it, it does sort of imply in her mind, she's thinking about like a legal case, a police case. Yeah. To use that term, I've done nothing wrong in this case. Yeah. Or yeah. also to say, I have done other stuff wrong. <laughs> I don't know. That was, I thought mm -hmm. the language there was weird. Mm -hmm. I did too. Well, she talked about personal revelation. Yeah. So personal revelation is the LDS belief that you can pray to the Lord and your prayers will be answered and, and, you, and you will have the answers that you're seeking. If you pray hard enough, if you're worthy enough, if you get to know the answer, you know, there's a list. But, yeah. you know, she had said, you know, talked over and over again, and, you know, mm -hmm. in the temple and all that stuff. And, and he's, as as right. He says that she said the Lord told her to go into hiding. But basically, she was doing everything that the Lord told her to do. Yeah, lying and, to the police and, mm -hmm. and implicating Melanie was part of what the mm -hmm. Lord said to do. Mm -hmm. She said right. to Melanie, you can have all of this confirmed by the Lord. That's a really interesting piece of gaslighting. That's a yes, Mormonism. Uh, totally. That, totally. And, and probably other religions, too. I mean, I we're just, you know, we're, we're talking about one specific thing because that's, well, what we're talking about, right? But. Right. That's a really typical, um, if you don't believe what I'm telling you, you need to pray harder. You need to go get your answers. There's something yeah. wrong with you, not with me. Yeah, this is your fault. You mm -hmm. are not on the right path or you would know the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, that is some serious religious gaslighting right yeah. there. Yeah, yep, it is. And Melanie said something like, I have. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I have. I have okay. had many, you know, uh -huh. uh, revelations. Yeah. Um, did you think it was interesting when Melanie told her, told Lori that she believed that she has been deceived by Satan and yeah. references Tammy and Charles's death as well as JJ being missing? Yeah. She's putting the pieces together here. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Some yeah. shit's gone down. Yeah. 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 So then, of course, Chad pipes up. Oh, boy. With some really gross shit about how, uh, you know, his wife died and his kids were right there with him and everybody knows, but his sister-in-law is dark. Ding, ding, ding. Another darkie. His sister-in-law is dark and she is spreading all of these theories and now everyone else's these theories that something happened to Tammy. He said Tammy had been ill and had been getting weaker and weaker and refused to go to the doctor and she just died. She just did it's just what happened okay a few things there uh bullfrog head or whatever we're calling you <laughs> toad resting face. Toad face. there you go yep. there you go resting toad face uh here we go first of all tammy was training for a triathlon or yeah, a marathon something, something, something like that tammy yeah. was in great health all of her friends the people she works with even their kids had said she was in good health. We just don't know what happened. I mean, yeah. that was just a straight up lie. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. she had been ill. That wasn't true at all. Um, the the sister-in-law was dark and she was uh, drawing people against them. Um, yes, yeah, some of the family members did blame Chad. Some yeah. of the family members didn't think Chad was a good husband and didn't think Tammy was in a good situation. Yeah. You know, I wanted to say, would it surprise you to know? <laughs> Yes, Mr. Pryor. Yes. Yeah. That uh, not everybody loved Chad. And yeah. some yeah. people in their family, on Tammy's side and on Chad's side, thought Chad was a terrible husband mm -hmm. and thought that Tammy should have gotten the hell out of there a while ago. So anyway, you know, he's calling the sister-in-law dark and blah, blah, blah. He said, it just makes my stomach hurt. Uh-huh. Okay, mm -hmm. Chad. What the hell ever. But again, it was that whole, we're martyrs, we're doing everything we're supposed to do, and the dark is just adversaries against us. Yeah. Well, and one thing he said, this phrase really hit me. This isn't a master plan. Yeah. Lord, Melanie never implies there's a plan or a master plan at all. They keep yeah. defending things she didn't say. Yeah. They defend some things that she didn't actually mm -hmm. accuse them of. And this was a big one, using that term. Just like, um, you know, I have done nothing wrong in this case, officer. And yeah. <laughs> this is not a master plan, except wink, wink. Yes, it sure is. Uh, I, th I found that really interesting. Mm -hmm. And one of our listeners today 
um, mentioned that. And, you know, I'm a social worker and this listener, I think, uh, you know, is, works in psychology in some way, and, you know, indicated that there's a lot given away here. And there really is. They say a lot of things that really don't have anything. Melanie is really confronting them about scriptural stuff and, and spiritual uh -huh. stuff yeah. and asking about JJ. But they take it quite a bit further than that in, yeah. in the way that they defend themselves. Like they're already feeling defensive. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, a phrase that Lori uses a few times is, I testify. Yes. What does that mean? Well, in this religion, a lot of times when people say, I testify, they are talking about revelation they have received from God that something is true. Yeah. So they might say they have a testimony of the church or of the scriptures or of a specific situation or whatever. But she says that repeatedly. I sure. testify. Those are powerful words. Those mean in that speak, right, that she has fasted, she's prayed, she's done the work to get those answers. She's absolutely told her. Mm -hmm. God has told her. Yes. Yeah, she well, said that or or Heavenly time. Father. I mean, the, the term that Mormons use more than God is Heavenly Father. It's Heavenly Father. Yeah. Or the Lord. The Lord. Mm -hmm. the Lord. Well, another word that they used that I found interesting was adversarial. They were they were telling yes. they were telling Melanie she's being adversarial. Mm -hmm. Well, that means that you're being of Satan. In, mm -hmm. in the adversary, Mormons refer to Satan as the adversary most of the time. Yes. And so calling someone adversarial basically means you're in cahoots with Satan. Yeah, yeah, found that interesting too. Because yeah, th those words have a little different meaning just secularly. But you yeah, know, in this culture, what you're saying to someone yeah. when you say something like that. Totally. There's a reference to Joseph Smith towards the end of his life that his friends turn on him. Yes. And they kind of pulled that one out on Melanie. Never yeah. did I think that you would be the one. Yes. Right. Never did I think you'd be the one to turn on us. Never did I think you'd be the one to question us. Again, they gaslighted the shit out of her, but she and really held her own. Right. I mean, uh, she's the person with the legitimate concern here. They tried to involve her in criminal activity. Yeah. And then they turn it all on her that she's the bad guy and she's being influenced. Influenced. That's yes. another word they use. Yes, that's influenced. Influenced by a dark, mm -hmm. by something dark. Yeah, that was interesting. They said that quite a few times and influenced really how insulting to Melanie that they mm -hmm. said that over and over in different ways that surely, I mean, what the really the speak was there was that uh, we're pissed because we're not influencing you now. Someone else is. Yeah, because we were telling you what the influencers for a good year. Right. Yeah. 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 So they're realizing and of course, they're blaming it on her boyfriend, David, yeah. rather than, you know, what's really happened here, which is she's kind of seen the light about what the hell is yeah. going on with these lunatics. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was anger and jealousy that they had. They've they've lost their hold on her. Yes. Yep. Melanie really boils it down to, you know, that she's very worried about their salvation, meaning that she's worried that they're not going to go to uh, one of the better levels of heaven. heaven I mean, the celestial kingdom. Kingdom. But, yeah, I mean, the, the LDS religion has different levels that you can ascend to when you die. And she's worried about their salvation. She's worried that they're going to be in trouble. And she keeps telling them that I'm just worried about you. And basically, yeah. they're throwing it back at her. Worry about yourself, you know. Well, and they keep saying, I love you. I love you, even though you're being so adversarial. Ooh, that... Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so manipulative and gross. Ugh. Totally. But Melanie really boils it down towards the end. And she says that they are behaving in a carnal nature. So a carnal nature basically means you two are just <laughs> corn dogs that wanted to have a lot of sex and tried to score some money. Yeah, that like, cor like Cora Whore did. Saying. You know, that yes. bad old Cora Whore who was an antichrist too. Um, <laughs> she, yeah. yeah. Why she was, was very offended by being called Cora uh, Whore. Yeah. I kind of horror, 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 but man, that is a great word. I can't wait to use that some more. Right, I know so you horror. already made a meme. <laughs> I did. I made a meme. <laughs> I know. So I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, horror, horror was uh, considered in the Book of Mormon to be an antichrist who had demanded things from God and God eventually struck him dumb. Uh, but he was like a super duper bad guy. Yeah. But one <laughs> of the things that she brought up a few times, of course, was um, adultery. And they yes. both completely glossed over that as if... Uh, that just hadn't really been a thing, even though you know that Melanie I mean, knew that was there for a long time. Yeah. Well, and I loved it when, when Melanie brought up Cora Hor and compares Lori to Cora Hor. Lori yeah. says, Melanie, Cora Hor, yeah. are you kidding me right now? 
<laughs> best best line of the whole call, I think. Right. That that was the best part of the scripture dance off of the whole. Oh, yeah, yeah. The scripture dance off was quite a dance off. Yeah. You have to understand if you grew up Mormon, you've been in these you've been in these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mormons, um, and just like not lots just of Mormon, you know, no, anyway, I'm sure not. Group probably in our experience, you know, we we took we were in Sunday school, we took seminary all the way through junior high and high school. Katie and I both went to a junior college that was an LDS owned junior college. Mm -hmm. We had religious religion classes all the way through school from junior high all the way through our first two years mm -hmm. in college. So these kinds of arguments were commonplace, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is you a real trend there. People around mm -hmm. you thought you shouldn't. They were going to start cracking out some scriptures to you and calling you a court whore and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or interestingly saying, I'm worried about you. Yes. Or I'm worried for your salvation. That was yeah, a big Those are pretty common phrases. Yeah. 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 Especially you know, if you were ever doing anything contrary to what the religion taught or, yeah. I don't know, making your own choices and some things, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So, I mean, essentially, Melanie went into the call to try to figure out where the hell is JJ? What is really going on? And didn't get anything from it, you know, no. except for you know, that whole confrontation. So, you know, mission not really accomplished, except for that her goal in that was to at least exonerate herself from any wrongdoing, which I think she did. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, Lori most certainly admitted that that is exactly what she did. And that was her intention. She has yeah. recorded saying mm -hmm. Yes, I did do that. And, you know, telling all her bullshit about why. Yeah. Yeah. So on that, good on Melanie. Uh, you know, she did lie to the police, but she did admit to the police that she lied. She admitted in court that she lied to the police. You know, she's she's done everything she can, I think, you know, to, to try to clean this up on her end as much as she could and to be of service, you know, to figure mm -hmm. out where the kids were, or at least, you know, to the best she could. So, yeah. Props to her for that and to David for supporting her and obviously being the, uh, you know, the support in the background that helped her make that call in the first place. Absolutely. The thing that I just cannot get over is through this entire incredibly self-righteous bullshit out of Lori and Chad. They know those kids are dead. Yeah. They know they're dead. They know they're buried in the backyard and they're going on and on about how they're working in the light and God is supporting mm -hmm. them and they're standing with Christ. And I mean, that's how mm -hmm. sick these people are. Yep. Yep. It's pretty tough to take hearing all of that, knowing what these two have done. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing that this entire time they knew exactly what had happened. That is yeah. how deep into this delusion they were. Yeah. You know, whether they're still in it, I don't know. I mean, they've had some serious reality land on them recently, but yeah. do they still really believe all this shit and that they've been doing what the Lord told them to do? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't either. And I know there's some people who think that it's all shit, you know, that they've never really believed that was true. I disagree. I do. I, I do, do too. I, do I, too. I wish I didn't, but I do. I, I think they really truly have fallen for their own hype and just continue to fall harder and harder. I mean, do I think that excuses any of their behavior? Not in any way whatsoever. But no. do I think that that's true? Yes, I do. Yeah, most, most definitely. I do too. And, you know, I mean, at this point they're, Doomsday did not come true. They're still in jail. It's now August. Yeah. Reality is landing. At some point, is one of them going to turn on the other one? Are they going to realize how screwed they are? Yeah. I don't know. It's it's hard to say. When you listen to how deep they were in it in this call, it really does make you wonder. Yeah, it does. Are they still this deluded? Mm -hmm. Has something snapped them back to reality yet? Because Chad sure know. didn't appear to be snapped back to reality in that two-day hearing. No, he sure didn't. It, mm -hmm. Lori's demeanor will be very interesting. You know, I'm really curious to see because he showed absolutely no, no even concern for himself, no even worry or fear, no. nothing. No, Not, certainly no remorse of any sort. No, no, I mean, no response, emotional response at all when they talked about recovering the bodies of the children. But he didn't even show concern for himself. And that is, you know, concerning. Yeah, that, that's he's, the martyr. He's definitely in the right place, which is out, out of society. Behind bars for hopefully ever. Yeah. Well, there you have it. So we'll be back. Uh, we'll, we'll be back Monday morning with a fresh new case that is not related to this one. But we'll also, yeah. 
you know, we'll probably try to do another live stream from the courthouse before Lori's hearing starts. And then, of course, we'll be reporting on Lori's hearing next week. So thanks for being here, you guys. If you have any questions or comments, drop them. I think that we can all very comfortably discuss religion without getting nasty. I hope we can, mm -hmm. you know, and that we can talk about it. If you guys have questions, uh, if we can't answer them, hopefully somebody else can. So, yeah, absolutely. All righty. Thanks, you guys. You've been listening to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Bye, everybody.